Welcome to Punky's World. This is our deep dive into certain aspects of that Family Tree magazine. Now, um, I was able to go through, take some notes. Um, this is an online tree tracker. Uh, where you've published your tree. That's something I should consider doing. We have the Ancestry DNA and New York, of course, the pullouts, um, and my notes. So let's. Uh, that hurt so much. Anyway. Um, so. From New York, there are two websites, and I'll try to remember to link them, nyheritage.org and NYS Historic Newspapers. Um, the next thing that I want to talk to you about is DNA. Um, there are six ancestry DNA tips, and we'll go through them all. First, bundle tests to say they recommend that when they're on sale, you buy a few here and there. I personally don't do that. I don't have the funds to do that. If you do, great. I know someone who does. Um, and make sure you upload your data to other sites. I have my data all over the place. That's very important. Um, for instance, if you come from, if your family in more recent times, and when I say more recent times, I mean the late 1800s <laughs> into the early 1900s, come from somewhere else, definitely put your data on my heritage because they have way more tests from abroad than other sites do. And group matches together. In other words, make groups for family lines. Some people will do dad's family and mom's family. It's too broad. Or they'll just do like their, their dad's last name, their mom's last name, and maybe their grandparents, their grandmother's last names. It's still too broad. What I do is separate every line. In other words, I have Wilson, which is my dad's line, which includes some offshoots, okay? But if I have a line that is um, like the Delzell line, I have a separate subgroup, I call it, for them that aren't related to my Wilson Dalzells. Um, I have my mother's at Cox and Dyer. I have Mitchell, separate. Um, I have Cox, Dyer, Mitchell. Um, there would, um, if there's any plants, they would go into the Mitchells. I'm trying to think, there has to be one more. Cox and Dyer are my grandmother's maiden name and her mother's maiden name. And then on my mother's father's side, his name was Mitchell. And his mother was plant. So, um, so it's important to group your matches together. I also have um, unknowns, and I separated them into um, no shared matches with tree and no shared matches without tree. <coughs> <coughs> I 
I did that for me. Um, so that when I go back, I can see if anything's changed. <coughs> as more people have tested. And it's something I do recommend. And when you do the DNA test, attach the kit to your dang tree. Make sure there's a tree attached to the kit. That's my biggest pet peeve. And if someone's deceased, please mark deceased. Otherwise, they come up as private. And guess what? I know your great-grandmother's deceased. You know? If all of a sudden... <laughs> And I've seen it, and I probably have it in my tree. That's why I try to make sure I mark the deceased people deceased as soon as I find that they're not. Um, because I had one tree that I was looking at, and the person was alive. The parents, one of the parents was alive, I think. And maybe one of the, the grandparents were gone. And one of the great grandparents, or a couple of the great grandparents, were marked as private. Like, I know your great grandparents aren't alive based on when your grandparents were born. You know, go over and click deceased. <coughs> so that's important. And it's very easy to do. You simply go into your tree, you click on that person, you go up on the side, you click quick edit, you go in. And you put the green dot in the one that says deceased instead of living. Save it and you're done. Even if you don't know when they died. Um, and their other thing was handle discoveries with discretion and care. In other words, if you find you have a half-sibling or if you find that a cousin isn't the child of who you thought they were the child of, or who they thought they were the child of, think about how you're going to handle it. Because it does happen. You know, DNA does sometimes Show you that people lied. So, um, also, if you want more explanations on how DNA works, go to these websites: DNA Explained, Shared CM Project, DNA Painter, which I love, and Your DNA Guide. I will list those. Um, Okay, they also did a quick tour of genie.com. That's G-E-N-I. Um, I have used it. I believe I have a tree there. I'm not sure. Import your tree. Um, and if there are entries already there, because it's a collaboration of people in your family, merge that into your genie tree. It'll save you a little bit of time. But also... When you're putting trees in other places, import them. Don't try to rewrite your tree everywhere. That would take you a thousand years. <laughs> <coughs> and make sure you share your DNA on there, which I haven't done yet. I couldn't figure, couldn't quite figure it out, but um, I also found something very interesting talking about the proper saving of hair samples. An acid-free envelope, a cool, dry place, um, and, and as strange as this is going to sound, search for hair samples for other ancestors. Because it was not uncommon, especially in the Victorian era, to put hair samples in necklaces and all sorts of different or make a bracelet out of a hair sample or something. Um, that would be more difficult to get their DNA off of because you're going to get 
the DNA of the person that wore it. But it can be done. Um, but yeah, you want to preserve it for later DNA use. I would love one day to be able to send my father's, a sample of my father's hair that I have in to like Ancestry. And some, they're saying that's coming um, to these sites to get an actual, you know, DNA picture of him. Um, and like I said, search for other hair. I know that sounds nasty, but actually it was very common, like I said, during that era to, you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, especially if, you're chi if it was a child that was deceased, to save a lock of hair and put it in a, you know, in a clear necklace where you could see the little lock of hair, or, um, which would be great because that would really preserve the DNA test. Hopefully, my dad's is in plastic. Um, and what I believe is an acid free uh, book. Anyway, um, they used to make bracelets out of them or. rings. You know different things right now they can only get mitochondrial I believe out of hair unless it has the root attached um, so that wouldn't do me any good with my father because I wouldn't be getting the DNA I need so which is the autosomal which is all of it um, so, and it's a good thing I have that hair because I hadn't even thought about the possibility of that hair being DNA tested. I just wanted a part of him. Um, and my mother didn't like the idea of ashes. I said, well, then I want a lock of his hair. And they, that's fine. And they gave it to me and I just... I remember looking at that very white hair. <laughs> but they cut it so there's no root. I mean, they didn't yank it out of his head. <laughs> you know, even though he was dead, he wouldn't have felt it. Um, it wouldn't have been kind, you know. So. So I really want to get someday get that tested so that I have both mom and dad so that's that's my goal and they say it's coming soon and I hope so oh they also say you should write down who gets custody of the hair <laughs> that sounds strange once you're gone, especially if you're planning to use it for DNA testing. Um, so yeah. Those are the hints and clues, and I will try to include some links. Um, so I think it's very important. Excuse me. Um, for all the things that we've discussed, I took three pages of notes. <laughs> Um, and I'm glad I did, because I think this will be a great video, and I hope you agree. 
Um, guys, please subscribe to both channels. We're trying to get to 500 on Kid Missing and 300 here in Monkey's World. Um, links, as always, in the description. Links to social media is in the description. Uh, check those out and give me a follow. God bless you. And I will see you next time. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.